but you, and then you will find your mean, but this guy, the only thing you have to do is change that standard deviation. If you don't change the standard deviation, you didn't use the central limit theorem for this. So you've got to change your standard deviation. So the first time through, I probably even asked you to give me a mean and a standard deviation. So let's, we'll, we'll just have to play this one by ear. All right, so remember, you're going to find that the mean is the same. The mean for your sample is the same as your population, but your standard deviation changes. That's the key to this part. Okay, then we get down and we actually do a problem. I'm looking for a sketch. I want all probability states. On that quiz, I took off only one point overall if you didn't give me probability statements. This time, I'll take off the point for each one. So I want a probability statement. I want a sketch with the sample standard deviation. Don't give me the whole full one. Find this guy first. And I don't know what happened over here. Uh, what's the standard deviation here? I don't even know. Sometimes my computer does weird things. There's a bird in here. So it's 208.3. Um, keep it, keep it down here. Let let the calculator do all the rounding. If you use the calculator step, give me your calculator step. If you just give me an answer and you don't give it to me, I can't give you credit. Especially when the answers are not right. If something's wrong, I don't see it. This has no correction for continuity here. No correction. Oh, don't worry about it, Olivia. Just have fun. Okay. No correction for continuity here. I'm good to go. I have a mean. I just have to change my standard deviation. Make your probability statement give me a little shading here this is less than 72 means i'm getting a big part if i give you different parts just label it so i should get a big chunk in my answer right i look it up and 99 18 is a big chunk more than 6500 this label from here 6500 more than just label this i know it'll cross over just label it big so somewhere around here, I'm very close to the negative one. Yeah, I really thought I was going to be close to the negative one. But my answer is pretty large. My answer, sorry, is pretty small. My answer should be pretty large. I should be a bigger chunk than 50%. But look how small this is. It reminds me to subtract from one. That's why I like the sketch. Please do the sketch. Because the sketch shows you where you should be. Can everybody do this? The between, the between 7,000 and 7,400, here's my 7,000. Somehow just try to figure it out how to fit it on here. Here's my 74, just go like this and label it as big. I only need one step. And I should be able to, just don't like draw in too, too dark and I should be able to see everything else. Are we okay with this? No continuity on this one. So I do my in-between. And again, if you like the calculator, the in-between is nice. The in-between is very nice because I know a lot of kids don't like to do the with the 9-9 thing. You got your boundaries right here. Your lower boundary is 7,000. Your upper boundary is 7,400. If you did the 999 here, don't forget, if there's four positions, you've got to put a lot more nines than that. My mean is 6,700. 
And I'm going to let the calculator fi figure out this guy. I'm just going to say 1250 divided by the square root of 36. I'm just going to say divide by 6. I'll let the calculator figure that out. I put it in. I paste. I get my answer. Here it is down here. 0 0.0745. Works out exactly in my couch. And remember, if you're going to do it the long way, find the E's, find the areas, subtract the areas. For anything else, try the in-between limits. It's so nice. Because you don't have to worry about your limit, your lower limit, your upper limit. If you do one with your upper limit, your lower limit, don't use 999. Because that's how big this is, four positions. Go out like a few more nines. The negative one is fine, but not the positive one. Questions? Everybody can do this. Okay. Alright, here we go to, I don't know why it's overlapped. Okay, here's the next one. A survey of U.S. adults found that 73% think that the federal government should require blah, 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 blah. You randomly select 12 U.S. adults from your population. And you want to determine if you could use the normal distribution to approximate the binomial distribution. Well, how do I know this is my binomial? What tells me this is binomial? How do I recognize that, that this is binomial? Other than the fact that can you use this to do this binomial? What told me? I have two different, two different responses. I have two options. I could say, yes, I think that they should be labeled as such? No, I don't think they should. Binomial, if I can meet these conditions, I have binomial. Because the first thing I say is, was my probability that x is less than or equal to or whatever, or my mean? I don't have any of this. They're not asking me for this. They're just asking me to test this to see if it's okay. There's no probability statement here. There's no sketch I need to do. There's nothing I need to figure out. This 12 people that they selected, Look where they selected them from. My population of U.S. adults. I'm still in my population. I'm not dealing with sample. My test says you have to pass these two tests. So test them. If you pass them, yes, you can approximate your binomial distribution with your normal curve. This guy is already the mean. Now I have a mean. Before I did it. So my standard deviation, if I need to find it, if, if this is what I had to do, I would plug this in. So if it worked, I'd be able to move forward. But did this work? No. So when it doesn't work, I stop. This guy already gives you the mean. The lower one is the one, the smaller one is the one you really want to test. Because if the smaller one doesn't pass, the larger one doesn't care. So make sure that you identify this. Right. Then it goes on, and I tried to like do this easily for you. A few of these you had to convert for correction for continuity. This is the only time you do the continuity, not on the sample size one, not on when I'm doing random samples. So you convert these guys. You start off with your probability statement. Start off with this number. It's more than this. Can I use, ask yourself first, can I use 25 if it's greater than or equal to 25? Yes. So now, this is my lower limit. Drop this down, 0.5. All it does is expand that bar just a little bit more for me. Because my discrete numbers don't have bars. Once I go to the right or to the left, yeah, I'm including all my area. But that endpoint needs a bar. So just convert this. You can put keep the equal sign or not. Because you'll never hit 24.5. The first discrete number you'll hit is 25. The area that you use for your z-square will be 24.5. 
I tend to keep the same sign as the original one. The book that the book always drops the equal sign. Um, less than 36 means you're coming up here. Start like this. Can I use 36? It's less than or equal to? Yep, I can. So this is an upper limit. I like, can't go down here. The only place I can go is up here. 36.5. My in-between is a little different. My in-between says right now you have one little line like this. You have no bar. So to make it a bar, expand this. Go down 0.5, go up 0.5. Now I have an in-between situation. Now I get this. And we write your inequalities with less than sign. Read your number lines from left to right and write them with less, less than sign. Questions on how to adjust this? You're going to have to do this on the test as well. Does that mean you all have it? It's not the two topics were not bad, and I like to put them together because they're so not related. Okay, now we're going to use this whole thing. So again, we have a survey that found 52% of teens have a savings account. You randomly select 45 U.S. teens. teens. This is your population speaking and ask them whether they have a savings account. What do they say? Yes? No. Binomial choice. So I determined if this could be binomial, and you can't even see this. Okay. I determined if this could be binomial. I look at my P, my Q, my N. I say yes, it's binomial. I test it first to see, do I approximate a normal curve? I Check binomial, check, pass my test, check, this is my mean, I'm already there, find my standard deviation, oh, got that too, so now I've got a mean, a standard deviation, I make my sketch, and now I can answer whatever you want me to answer. So I say, at most, because I didn't have a mean before, I didn't have a standard deviation to put in your z-score. Now we have one. I say, at most, this means the most you could have. So I could have 15, 14, 13. Can I use 15? Yep. I correct it for continuity. I expanded 0.5. That's the number that goes in my z-score formula, 15.5. And don't come back and tell me you have a 15 and 15.5 is not a lot of difference. It still has to be corrected for continuity. We should try to get it as exact as we can with the probability. Okay, if you use your calculator, just give me your step and give me your answer because your answer is probably rounded a little bit differently. And without any work, I, I won't be able to give you credit. Plus, you got to do all this anyway, right? Got to get that done anyway. Shade in here, where's my 15? Somewhere here. I expect my probability to be small. Yeah, my probability is small. I expected it to come there. My board is not cooperative today. Exactly 25. Remember the exactly? has no bar. So you have to make a bar. So you drop the 0.5 and you raise the 0.5. You find both your z-squares, find your areas, subtract your areas. It should be small. Shouldn't that area be small? You're only making one bar for that area. Just one bar. And greater than 30, it's not like this. 30, 31, 32. Can I use 30 if I say greater than 30? Nope. So the first number I can use is 31. Drop this guy down to 30.5. This is my correction for continuity. And I think I gave you...
I gave you a question. I gave you, after we finished the 5.4, I gave you one question that says, can you use this, the binomial distribution to approximate a normal distribution? So that's the test part. Then I gave you a question for correction for continuity. So hopefully after you do those two things, you remember to do those two things in the next problem. Right? So it's kind of like set up so that you finish one section, you go into the next section. So once you do those tests and correct for continuity, use that same concept on the next two problems. I didn't mix up the problem. So as soon as you do that, you can go into the next one. Questions at all? Yes, uh, for the D four, you didn't divide the bottom by square root of n, right? No, not on this one. Why is that? Because we don't have a sample for this one. We're only dealing with the population for this one. So your z square formula says this part, not the upper part. This one says population standard deviation. This guy's only dealing with the population. The 12 that it took, it took 12, I don't remember what it took, right? What was n for this guy? 12? No. What was n for this one? 45. 45? The 45 that it took was from the population. That's how many times I'm going to run this binomial experiment, 45 times. That's my n for trial, not n for sample. So don't let, it is confusing that part because we use n for sample as well. So it just depends on the wording of it you're saying? These come from, let me move this up, these come from your U.S. This comes from the population. The, the other one, remember, said random samples of, it's all in the wording is right. See where this says you randomly select 45 U.S. teams? Yes. It didn't say you take a sample of. It says you take from the population 45 teams and you ask them to enter this. That one isn't a sample? That's not a sample. Oh, You're just familiar. selecting from the population. You're selecting people from the population, asking them at random. This is my population. At random, I, I, I test, test, I test you, I test and delete. I, I'm checking 45 people. I'm, not, I'm asking them, do you say yes or no? Do you say yes or no? Do you say yes or no? If I were to read that, I would think it's a sample. You, but what word says sample to you? What word says sample? Because mm -hmm. you're taking 45 of the entire U.S. of all U.S. teams. Right. So you would think that, yes, but does it, does it say at any point sample? It said you randomly select uh, 45. It's population either. Well, yeah, from U.S. teams. Where is my U.S. team? That's my population. Uh, What's the and it, it's confusing. But now, go back to this one. Let's see if, if I could put them side by side. I could show you the difference. Um, ah, how about this one? The mean value of land per acre is this. I'm giving you a mean. A random sample of 36 is drawn. That's the sample size. So that's going to have to tell you. Look at the one above it. Random samples of 35 are drawn from this population. I got to tell you sample. Plus, this one gives you the mean. The other one doesn't give you the mean. So you're saying if it, if it doesn't say sample, it's all not the population? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It, that is probably the trickiest one. So again, I don't mix them up on you. Once you do the first part, you're going straight into the second part. John has a very valid question. And what else tells me on this one? What else speaks to me on this one? And says, how do I know that I don't have to do a binomial thing on this one? What else is missing? It, it gives me the population standard deviation. I did not have to find it. It gave me a mean. Already it gave me the mean. It gave me the population, right? And what else is missing that makes this not binomial? The percent, like what percent of these people said yes or no, or they like this or they didn't like this. There's no probability in here. There's no probability in here. This cannot be my binomial because they didn't give me a binomial probability. So I know I have to do this. What is confusing is this part. When you get to this one, Remember sometimes I said if you compare a population from a sample, so the, the pop, if I'm comparing the population to the sample, say for this guy, then my population is 1. 
So when I do this, I just keep my population standard deviation as is. So my mean stays the same. If I had to do this for the same exact thing, I wouldn't, from my population, I wouldn't have a sample standard deviation. I would keep my population at one. That's, that's the trickier part. But right now, recognize them by, there's no probability in here for yay or yay or yay or nay here. And I'm given the mean, I'm given the standard deviation, I don't have to find them. My other one, I have to find the mean. I have to find the standard deviation. So whatever n they give you there is going to be your trial class. Kind of say this? Yeah. Again, I didn't mix them up on you. I left this. The first one, you're going to hit the 5.4 ones where you're going to change the standard deviations yourself. 